In this video, I'm going to show you my top 25 Windows 10 tips and tricks. Number one, mobile hotspot. So on your computer, if you're on a laptop and you want to share your internet, you can actually enable mobile hotspot. So I'm using Windows 10 version 19.09 and the way that you enable mobile hotspot is click on start, settings, network and internet and right here mobile hotspot and then you just click on this to toggle on and you're sharing your internet connection so what you want to provide to the people that want to connect to your mobile mobile hotspot is the network name which is for me right here is going to be desktop hyphen u2 con 9g3822 and right below that it provides the network password so if somebody that doesn't have a internet connection and they want to connect to the internet uh, through your computer, you could enable mobile hotspot and they will just connect to your desktop here and then they will enter this password to get uh, connected to your mobile hotspot. Number two, displaying hidden files and folders. To display hidden files and folder, open up File Explorer and then click on file and choose change folder and search options and under the view tab click on that and choose show hidden files and folders drives and you, you will click apply and you will click apply to all folders and click on yes right here to apply the settings and OK number three file version history. File version history allows you to back up your computer data and it, backs up, it can back up hourly, daily, or weekly. To enable file version history, you will click on start, settings, update and security, backup, and over here, you will have to use an external drive, either a USB drive or a network drive. So it's probably better to just uh, plug in a USB drive to your computer. So I already have a USB plugin, so I will just click Add a Drive. And then select my USB drive. Now if you click on More Options, over here, by default, the backup, it backs up your user your user account, uh, your save games, links, downloads, favorite contacts, desktop. Now if you have other folders that you want to back up, you will click on add a folder and then choose like for example if I want to choose my options folder. So I'll choose that and choose folder. And my options folder is added to the list. So let me show you my options folder. Where is it? options right here it'll show you the folder that's not the standard backup folder so you could add any folders you want and you could also schedule the backup to run at a certain interval so by default my backup file is running every hour but you could set it to run 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes or 3 hours 6 hours or 12 hours or daily and you could tell it to say I want to back up my keep my backups forever or for me I prefer to keep it for two years if you have the space and you want to keep it forever you could just choose forever and that's how you enable file version history number four Microsoft Edge reading view and web notes so if you're reading an article, let's say this one here, Wuhan Professor Call, you go there and by default, the browser shows a lot of advertisements and all these uh, links over on the sides. So what you could do is click on this little icon up here called Reading View. You click on that, it'll change the view into a reading, uh, reading view mode and you could take notes. So right here, Add Notes, you click on this pencil and you can start taking notes and highlighting whatever you want. So if I choose the highlighter, 
I could highlight this. I could erase it if I don't want it. I could highlight in a different color. I could say, I could circle this. Ten Wuhan professor sign an open letter demanding free speech protection. And after I'm done with that, I could, I could save this if I want. Save it into OneNote, or just save it in my favorite or in my reading list. Okay, I'm gonna cancel that, but uh, it gives you an option to save it. If you want to save all the notes you took. Number five, make text bigger. To make the text bigger on your screen, click on Start, Settings, Ease of Access, click on Ease of Access. And right here, there's a bar that allows you to slide the text to make it bigger. So currently it's at 100%. So for me, I like making it a little bit bigger so I can see better. So 125%. You could, you could adjust to the size that you want and click Apply. And all your text becomes 124 or 25% bigger, depends on what your setting is. Number six, printing in PDF. So Microsoft Windows 10 has a built-in PDF printer. So I have this document open. So to create this into a PDF, you would click on File, Print, and then you would choose the Microsoft Print to PDF. And you print it. It's going to ask you, where do you want to save this PDF? So I'm going to just choose my desktop. And I'll just call this Test. And Save. And there it goes. My test PDF file right here. It's changed to this story called Little Red Riding Hood into a PDF file. And you can view this PDF file using your preferred PDF reader. So here's the PDF file right here. So it looks pretty good. So that's how you convert a document into a PDF file. Number seven, step recorder. Step recorder allows you to record the various steps that you perform on your Windows computer. To launch step recorder, click on start and you scroll down to Windows Accessory. Expand Windows Accessory and click on step recorder. So we're going to record one, record an example for you. So you cl click on Start recording. And I'm going to open up Google Chrome. Close these tab up. And then I'm going to go to this website, www.google.com. And here, I'm going to type in how to cook a cake. And from here, I'll just click on this link called WikiHow, Four Ways to Bake a Cake. And I will stop the step recorder. So once you stop the step recorder, it'll give you an option to display everything that you did. You just click on Google Chrome. And then user click on the address bar. And then user type in Gmail on how. And if you go down here further, it gives you more detail on exactly what you did. Step recorder is a great way to show somebody how to do something step by step. Or if it's if you have a problem with your computer and you need to troubleshoot it, then step recorder allows you to record this and send it to a tech support person. So after you're done with your step recorder, you can save this and then send it over to whoever that needs to see it. So I'm going to cancel that. I don't need to save this. And that's how you use that recorder. Number eight, Quick Assist. Microsoft Quick Assist. Sometimes when there's somebody that has a computer problem and they need your help or you need somebody's, somebody's help, you could start a Quick Assist session. So to start Quick Assist, click on Start. 
and scroll down to Windows Accessories and then Quick Assist. And from here, the person who's trying to help you, they'll provide a code for you. And then what you want to do is enter this code here and then share your screen. And then they'll be able to They'll be, they'll be able to see your screen and while you do things. But if you're trying to help somebody, then you will click on assist another person and then sign in with your Microsoft account. So I'll go ahead and sign in with my account here. Next. Okay. I'm signed in and then I would provide this security code to the other person. So they would choose request assistant or request somebody to help them. And then the person who's trying to help them would provide this code for them over the phone or via chat, chat or something. And then you'll be able to control their computer if, uh, if they allow that and then uh, view their screen to help them out. So that's quick assist. Number nine, reset this PC. Sometimes there might be problems with your computer and you just don't know what's going on with it. So you could, there's an option for you, could, for you to reset your PC. To get there, click on start, settings, update and security, recovery, and under the section reset this PC, click on get started. From here, you have two options. You can either run this to keep your your files, but it also it will remove your app and your settings. Or the other option is to remove everything. This option will clean up your computer if there's some problem with your computer. So this is something to try, but you do need to reinstall all your applications if you choose keep my files, or you just want to do like a brand new everything, remove everything. That's your second option. Number 10, fast startup. By default, Windows has this setting that puts the computer in hibernation when you shut it down so it can start up really fast. To adjust this setting, you would click on Start, Settings, System, Power and Sleep, and scroll down until you see this option called Additional Power Settings. And on this upper left hand corner, click on choose what the power button does. And click this button right here to change settings that are currently unavailable. And right here, you could turn fast startup on and off. Number 11, store sense. Windows has a capability that automatically cleans up your temporary file and empty your recycling bin. To configure that, Click on Start, Settings, System, Storage, and over here, there's an option for you to toggle the Storage Sense capability on and off. So Storage Sense, again, will clean up your temporary file and your recycling bin and files that it can get rid of automatically. Number 12, Snip and Scratch. Basically, Snip and Scratch is a screenshot program built into Windows. This is a replacement for the current snipping tool. To use that, under this search bar, just type Snip and Scratch. And this comes up with Snip and Scratch. Click on that. And you could click on New and it gives you an option to take a screenshot of something. So let's just go ahead and take a screenshot of these stairs to heaven image. And then from here, you could highlight the text in this image. You could write some text. You could also measure it. 
you can erase something if you don't like it. Let me go ahead and turn off the ruler. And you could uh, uh, crop the image if it's too big. And click on the check mark when you're done cropping the to, uh, cropping the image. And finally, you could save this image or copy it. So this copy icon, if you want to just copy and paste it into a, a Word document or an email, or you want to save it and save it as a PNG format. And that's how you use Snip and Scratch. Also. One last thing is there's a shortcut key to bring up Snip and Scratch. It's uh, the Windows key, Shift and S. And that brings up the Snip and Scratch tool as well that allows you to take more screenshots. Number 13, Night Night. On your screen, on your computer screen, it emits a blue light that keeps you up at night, especially if you're using your computer at night. So Windows has a feature that turns that light into a warm color so it so you could sleep better. So to enable night night, click on start, settings, system, under display, there's a night night setting. Click on this to toggle it on. And from here, if you go into, under night night settings, this allows you to change the, the temperature of the color. Less warm or more warm using this slide bar. And you can also schedule this as well. Let turn on and off during this uh, preset sunset or sunrise. Or you can set your own hours by click on this set your own hours. Turn on at any time that you want. By default, it has it at 9 p.m. and then it turns off at 7 a.m. But you could adjust it the way that you want. Number 14, arrow shake and snap windows. Windows has this feature that allows you to minimize all your windows except one by shaking one of the active windows. So for example, if I hold on to this Chrome browser and shake it, it makes everything minimized except the Chrome browser. If I hold the title bar again and shake again, everything comes back up again. And you can also snap these windows into, into one fourth of the screen by dragging it to the upper left hand corner or the upper right hand corner or the lower right hand corner or the lower lower left hand corner and you could also choose this by doing a split screen so you just want two applications side by side you could do split screen by dragging it all the way to the left and it does a split screen between two applications if you want an application to be in full screen you drag it and you push it all the way up to the top it'll fill the whole screen So that's how you do arrow shake and snap windows. Number 15, system restore point. Sometimes you want to keep a system restore point so that way if you install a, a bad update or you install an application that changes certain system settings, you can roll back to a certain restore point. To create a restore point, you would click on start settings settings again I mean systems and then click on about scroll down and choose system info and click advanced system settings under the system protection tab click on the system protection tab and right here at the bottom there's a create button which allows you to create a system restore point. Create it. You could give it any name you want. So you could do pre-installation of snag. And then you click on create. 
and this will create a system report store point of the current system setting of a working system. So if there's something wrong, you could go back to this restore point. So to go back to that restore point, there's an option right here called system restore. You choose that and it allows you to restore this back to a point in time that you have a, a restore point. And you just go ahead and follow the prompt to uh, roll back to that particular restore point. Number 16, hidden start menu. So usually when you move your mouse over to the start menu, you click on a left click, it gives you this menu, this startup menu. But if you right click on it, it gives you a different startup menu that allows you to go straight into these different locations like app features, power options, event viewer system, and so forth. So right clicking on this allows you to have this secret pop-up start menu. Number 17, default apps. Now Windows allows you to change certain apps to open up certain programs. To be able to set the default apps for, let's say a browser, click on start, settings, apps, and under default apps, right here, you see some of these are default apps for various things. So if you want to change the default web browser, you click on this and it gives you options of other available browsers. So let's just click on Chrome. So next time we open up a web page, it will automatically open up in Google Chrome. Plus, if you see down here, change default app by file type. So you click on that. Over here, it allows you to change the default apps for various applications like a Word document, like DOCX or DOC. So let me go ahead and show down, give you a sample of how this works. So you scroll all the way down until you see the right file extension. So do you see it dot CDA? So we want to look for dot DOC or dot DOCX, which are uh, Word documents. So scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. So right here is dot DLC and right here, right here is dot DLC and down up down here is dot DLCX. So by default it's using a Word document to open up. So let's say I don't want to use Microsoft Word to open this. So you would click on this icon. It'll give you other apps that currently can open up dot uh, DLC files. So I want to choose LibreOffice Writer. So if I do that, next time I double click on a Word document that ends with a dot DLC, it'll open up in LibreOffice Writer. So if I want to do the same thing with a dot DLCX, then I will click on the Word icon right here to the right. And I will choose the application that I want to open it with. For example, LibreOffice Writer. So next time, if I double click on dot DLCX, it'll open up using this uh, application called Libra Office Writer. Number 18, downloading offline maps. So Windows 10 has a feature that allows you to look at maps for a various location, but by default, it has to connect to the internet to look at these maps. So for example, if we go over here under start and then um, choose maps. This shows the maps of, uh, right here is uh, a map of San Francisco, but this has to go onto the internet to get to it. But let's say you're at a location that doesn't have any internet access and you want to just look at the map of San Francisco or something on your laptop, it's not going to be available. So you can actually download the map for uh, San Francisco. So for, let's go ahead and close this up. To download an offline map, click on Start, Settings, Apps, Offline Maps. And right here, there's a Download Maps uh, button. Click on that. And this allows you to download maps of uh, various locations. So if we go to North and Central America, from here, you could download uh, the Bahamas, Belize, 
but if you want to download a map from the United States the USA click on that and let's say I want to download a map for California you would click on that and then it'll start downloading that map and it'll be available for you to use offline number 19 notifications Windows allows you to set the notification for various applications to set the notifications click on start settings system under notification and action this allows you to turn notification on or off or you could specify these show notification on the not screen show reminder incoming voice over IP calls on the lock screen and a few other settings plus you can also choose which application are, is allowed to send you notifications over here it allows you to toggle on and off so go ahead and look over your notification and see what notifications you want and you know what notifications you don't want and you could turn it on and off number 20 startup programs and startup services to see what kind of programs are starting up on your computer click on the, the search bar right here and type task manager and open up the task manager app in the task manager app under startup under the startup tab these are the programs that are currently starting up on your computer from here, you can see the status if it's enabled or disabled. So if it's enabled, it's going to be starting up on, on a startup when your computer starts up. If it's disabled, it is not starting up. So to enable and disable application, just right click on the app and it allows you to disable if it's currently enabled. You want to enable that and the status is currently disabled. Right click on that and it gives you an option to enable it. For services, go under the service tab and if you want to modify a startup service, so this is uh, open up uh, the service control panel. So right click on one of these services and then on the pop-up menu, choose open services. And right here, it opens up a new window that allows you to see all the services that are currently running on your computer. So under the status column, these are all background services that are running on your computer. And under the start up type, these are set up to start up automatically when your system runs. So if you know that there's a service that you don't need starting up when your computer starts up, what you could do is double click on it and then change the startup type from automatic to disable or manual so you can see this service is running right now so you can stop the service if you don't need it and it'll start it stop it and the status of the service has stopped and you can change it to manual so next time you want if you don't want it to automatically stop change to manual and click apply and click OK so that's how you change the service from starting up automatically to manually. Number 21, got mode. You create a folder, right click on your desktop and choose new folder and enter this key got mode dot and a whole bunch of uh, screen string. Enter. It'll create this this list of all program tasks that you could go easily and uh, modify these settings in one place. Administrative tool, all play, backup and restore, adjusting your clock, devices and printers. Just one place for you to make a lot of system changes very easily. Number 22, adjust for best performance. Windows by default enables a lot of features that you may not need. It just makes the Windows looks pretty. So you want to have a better performance, you could turn all those off. 
So to do that, under the search bar, type control, and it should give you the control panel opened up, and go into system and settings, system, go into system and security, and then go into system, and go into advanced system settings, and under the advanced tab, click on settings under the performance section. And over here, by default, Windows enables all these animation control, enable peak, fade, basically everything over here that's checked is enabled. So you could click on this radio button, adjust for best performance. And what that does, it turns off all those features. By turning these features, it will improve the performance of your computer. Click apply and click OK to make those adjustments. Number 23, virtual desktop. Windows allows you to have multiple desktops at the same time. To use that, go to the go to your taskbar and right here where there's a task view, click on that. And this allows you to create a new Windows desktop. So on the upper left hand corner, click on new desktop and then you have desktop one and desktop two. So let's say if you have an application that's open and this is currently on desktop one. So let me open up something else. So I'll open up a, a Firefox browser and a Chrome browser. So currently I have both the Firefox and the Chrome browser on desktop one. So if I wanna move the, the Firefox browser to let's say desktop Actually, that was on desktop two. It, let's say if I want to move it to desktop one, all I do is select the application that I want to move to desktop one and drag it to desktop one. And there you go. This is desktop two. I have only the Chrome application open. And then if I click on the task view and go to desktop two, I have only the Firefox application open. And that's how you use virtual desktop. You can actually have more virtual desktop if you want to organize whatever you're doing. Number 24, mouse cursor and pointer and show location. So sometimes you wanna adjust the mouse to make it bigger or change the color of it. And sometimes your mouse, you don't know where it is. You can enable show mouse location. To do that, click on start, settings, devices and on the left click on mouse from here you could change the scroll rate of your mouse and right here go ahead and click on adjust mouse and cursor and right here you could adjust the size of your of your cursor slide this bar and your cursor becomes bigger slide back to the left it becomes smaller so let's just uh, set it to size three. And right here, it gives you a few colors to choose from. So let's say you want this color, then you click on that box. It'll turn, what is that, lime or green or whatever you think it is. But if you don't like that color, you could choose purple or green or turquoise. And if you scroll down, there's an option for additional mouse setting. So you click on that and then click on additional mouse option. Right here uh, under uh, pointers, click on pointers, the pointers tab. There's a enable, sorry, not there. Under the pointers option, there's this option called show location of pointer when I press the control key. So I currently have it enabled. So if I press control key, it shows you where the mouse is currently located. So if somehow you, you couldn't find your mouse, just press control. It'll give you that beacon. So that way you, where you, so that way you know where your mouse is located. Number 25, adding a second language. Windows allows you to add 
other languages as well if you want to type in a foreign language like Russian or Chinese or whatever to add a second language click on start settings time and language and then on the left click on language and at the center prefer language click the plus button to add another language right here on the top you can search the language that you want to add so let's say Russian okay so uh, choose the Russian language that you want so let's say uh, I want to get just the Russian language click on next and this allows you to install a language pad text-to-speech handwriting and also typing too so you could type in Russian and you go ahead and click install and then this gives you uh, the option to switch between different keyboards between the English keyboard and the uh, Russian keyboard so you could type in Russian you can also do this for other language pad as well so you choose the language pad that you want to install and then um, it'll give you the keyboard option to type in that language as well